Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I built this DIY boosted board electric skateboard clone. The goal of this build was to make an electric skateboard that looks and feels like a boosted board, but with much higher specs. I took a stab at this three and a half years ago and it went pretty well, so a few months ago I decided to improve on the design and add some new components to make it even better. This board has a top speed of around 28 miles an hour, a range of 17 miles, and 5000 watts of combined motor power, which is over double that of the original boosted boards. In this video, I will share all of the components that I used on this board and the process that I used to build it. Some of the components are no longer available, so I will also suggest alternatives for a similar build. For all of the parts that we used in the video, make sure to check the description below. And without further ado, let's get into how we built this DIY boosted board clone. The first component is the deck, which had to be the legendary loaded vanguard deck that was used on the iconic boosted V1 and V2 boards. This deck was used on our last boosted clone build so it is a little bit dinged up. Some of the work in preparing the vanguard for this build is already done from that attempt. The battery extender cables to connect the two separate enclosures are already installed and routed through the top of the deck. I did this by using a router to cut a channel in the top of the vanguard deck. An XD60 sits at the front of the deck where the battery will be feeding into the 12 gauge wires which goes up through the holes and into the channel on the top of the deck and then comes down to a second set of holes at the back of the deck into another XD60 connector which connects up into the ESC. The first thing that I did in the build was to grip the board using some standard black adjust up grip tape. The Vanguard comes with a clear grip tape pre-installed which I sanded off in the last video in order to route the wire through the top of the deck and install some custom grip tape so a brand new deck will require sanding. The enclosures that I'm using for this build are custom 3D printed ones that I drew up in CAD. They are 5mm thick and were printed from black PETG on my Prusa. Both enclosures are specifically designed to fit the contour of the Vanguard deck and match the aesthetic of the boosted board enclosures. The front enclosure is larger and thicker and will hold the battery, while the rear enclosure is smaller and thinner and will hold the ESC. If anyone is interested in the STL files for these enclosures, let us know and we can post them somewhere. Before mounting anything inside of the enclosures, I used an EVA foam sheet to make custom gaskets for the front and rear enclosures. I positioned the enclosures roughly where I thought they would sit on the deck and then cut out their outline using an X-Acto knife and the enclosure as a stencil. I also cut out holes for the battery harness to pass through. The result wasn't the prettiest, but their functionality will be perfect. The gaskets help tremendously with vibrations between the board and the enclosure and also with weatherproofing. The EVA foam has a peel-off adhesive backing, which I then used to stick the gaskets to the deck, passing the wires through the hole that I cut into the gaskets. To mount the enclosures to the deck, I'm going to be using a series of nuts, bolts, and washers. The front enclosure will be using 10 bolts total. I mocked up how the front enclosure would sit on the foam gasket and then drilled the 10 holes into the deck that line up with those that I designed into the enclosure. I first did all of the holes on one side of the enclosure and then bolted the enclosure to the deck on that side. I then held the other side of the enclosure down and drilled in the remaining 5 holes. This allows the holes to be as accurate as possible when the enclosure bends and conforms to the curvature of the deck. I repeated this exact same process for the rear enclosure which only uses 4 bolts. Moving back to the enclosures, the front enclosure features a hole for the charge port designed into the enclosure. I mounted the 5.5 by 2.1 mm DC barrel jack charge port into the enclosure using some hot glue because I didn't have the proper nut to panel mount it. The battery that I used on the build is a 12S2P 354 watt hour lithium ion battery made from Samsung 40T cells. I used a piece of heavy duty velcro to secure the battery inside of the front enclosure. With the battery installed, I connected the XT30 on the charge port to the XT30 on the battery. I ended up having problems with this front enclosure as it cracked on my very first ride with the board. The enclosure ended up fracturing along the fillet between the main body and the flange. This battery is a little bit heavy for a 3D print enclosure, so this was a fear of mine going into the build. I ended up redesigning the enclosure to reduce the stress at this corner and reprinting it. For extra security, I added two layers of fiberglass cloth to the outside of the enclosure and finished it with a coat of black spray paint to make it look similar to the original design. Since this modification, I haven't had any issues with the front enclosure. The rear enclosure is designed to hold a dual VESC based ESC. It has four holes built into the top so that an ESC can be directly mounted to the enclosure. There is also a hole designed into the side of the enclosure for the power switch and two channels at the rear of the enclosure to route the motor phase wires. The ESC that we are using is a classic Fockbox Unity VESC based ESC. 
The Unity is a proven dual VESC based ESC that is compact and can provide high performance. There's also a Bluetooth module built in to connect to the VESC tool. This ESC is unfortunately no longer manufactured. I would recommend either the Stormcore 60D or the Maker X DV6 Pro for a similar build at the moment. The first step I did in assembling the rear enclosure was to mount the power switch to the enclosure. The enclosure wall was a little bit too thick, so I couldn't use the retaining nut. I ended up just hot gluing the power switch to the enclosure as a result and it worked just fine. I then bolted the ESC to the enclosure using four M3 countersunk bolts. The holes on the top of the enclosure matched the thread pattern on the Unity perfectly. With the ESC mounted, I then connected the power switch to the Unity. The remote and receiver that I'm using is the Flipsky VX1. This remote is reliable and resembles the boosted board remote controller. I find it to be quite ergonomic and easy to hold. I connected the JST connector from the receiver into the UART port on the ESC, and then connected the smaller 2-pin JST to the voltage read port on the Unity. This 2-pin connector allows the receiver to read the battery voltage to track the battery percentage of the board for the remote. It can be connected into any point along the positive battery lead. To secure the receiver, I used some Velcro and stuck it to the sidewall of the rear enclosure. For the mechanical components on this build, I used the RKP Mini Complete Mechanical Kit from our online store, propulsionboards.com. This kit is perfect for compact, powerful, and reliable DIY electric skateboard drivetrains. It uses our proprietary RKP Mini Trucks and dual 6354 motors for a maximum power output of 4,900 watts. For a detailed review and tutorial on how to assemble this kit, watch the video linked in the top right corner here. If you are interested in purchasing the complete mechanical kit, we will have a link in the description below. I first mounted the front truck to the deck using standard skate hardware. I used a riser pad and added some shred lights mounts so that I can ride at night. I then mounted the rear truck with the drivetrain assembled, also using the standard skate hardware, riser pads, and shred lights mounts. Next, I began the process of mounting the front enclosure to the board. I inserted the 10 countersunk Phillips head bolts into the holes that I drilled into the deck earlier. I then flipped the deck over and connected the XT60 lead on the battery to the XT60 on the harness that goes through the deck. Once connected, I flipped the enclosure over and slotted the enclosure holes onto the protruding bolts. After lining everything up correctly, I added a washer and nut to each bolt to secure the enclosure to the deck. I then turned to the rear enclosure and inserted the four countersunk bolts in the holes I pre-drilled there. I then finished up all of the electrical connections in the rear enclosure. I began by connecting the XT60 on the ESC to the XT60 on the battery harness. I then connected the three phase wires from each motor into the corresponding three phase wires on the Unity. I also made sure to plug in the sensor wire from each motor into the sensor port on the ESC. I crossed the wires so that when I flipped the enclosure over, they end up in the correct slot. With everything wired up and ready to go, I connected the ESC to the VESC tool and programmed it. I will not be showing how I did that in this video, but I've left a link to a great VESC programming tutorial in the upper right corner here. With the board programmed, I began the mad scramble to arrange all of the wires within the enclosure. Once I found an orientation that worked, I secured the enclosure fully to the deck using a washer and a nut on each bolt. The wheels that I'm using for this build are the orange 85mm orangutan kagawamas to match the aesthetic of the 80mm kegel wheels used on the V2 boosted board. These wheels are nearly identical to those used on the boosted, but they are a little bit larger in diameter to give a slightly smoother ride. The orange Kagawama wheels have a diameter of 85mm, a durometer of 80A, a contact patch of 56mm, and feature a Kegel core. For the bearings, I'm using Zealous bearings with built-in spacers. To mount the bearing to the wheels, I slid the bearing onto a truck axle and then pressed the axle into the wheel. The final step was to mount the wheels to the trucks. The front wheels mount to the front axle just like any other longboard wheels and trucks. The rear wheels are similarly mounted, but the core of the Kegel wheel must first be aligned with the pegs on the wheel pulley and then snapped on. And just like that, our boosted clone is finished. This is what the final product looks like.
so there you guys have it. That is how I built my boosted clone electric skateboard. Overall, I'm very happy with how the board turned out aesthetically. It's nowhere near perfect, but it matches a similar vibe to the OG boosted board, which was the goal. The drivetrain in particular is very clean and works perfectly for this build. I would definitely recommend taking a look at the RKP Mini Complete Mechanical Kit if you are interested in building a DIY electric skateboard with a compact yet powerful drivetrain. As far as the specs go, like I said at the beginning of this video, the board has a top speed of 28 miles an hour in a range of up to 17 miles. The acceleration and hill climbing on the board are also absolutely incredible thanks to those massive 6354 2450 watt motors. The ride feeling of this board with the loaded Vanguard is also phenomenal. Once you get the hang of it, this board is so much fun to carve and pop in and out of turns on. The flexiness of the deck is also next level when it comes to vibration damping and the smoothness of the ride. From the performance and specs to the ride feeling of this board, this DIY boosted clone is absolutely incredible. It's been one of my favorite boards to take out lately just because it's so much fun to ride. That's all I have for this build video. If you are interested in supporting our channel, please make sure to check out our new Propulsion Boards merch. It goes a long way in helping the growth of our channel. Another great way to support our growth is to become a part of our audience on Patreon. There's a link to both our merch and our Patreon in the description below. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let us know in the comment section below and we'll also make sure to get back to you. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for lots of other DIY electric skateboard content. Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you guys in the next video.